You guys may have heard stories about big coolers. Well, for the actual card itself, I don't think it gets much crazier than this. This is the RTX 2060 ROG Strix, and they've pretty much put a 2080 Ti sized cooler on something that would be considered a mid-range graphics card. I mean, this thing right here is bigger than a Radeon 7, which is AMD's best card at the moment, but of course the Radeon 7 outperforms the RTX 2060. So what were Zeus going for when they designed this card? Well, today we're gonna to be running this thing through all the tests and paces that you would expect from a graphics card review, except we're gonna be changing things to make it a Gravis card review, as you guys all know and love around Tech Yes City. But kicking things straight off with this card, you've got a dual V BIOS switch, which changes between quiet mode and also performance mode. Out of the box, it comes defaulted to performance mode, which will give you fan speeds of 50%, and that will allow the card to go up with normalized clock speeds to around two gigahertz. Switching this over to Q mode does drop the fan speeds down roughly 10%, and also raises the temperatures about six degrees over that out of the box and also drops the clock speeds down roughly 30 megahertz. Overclocking the card will bring you extra performance. However, in this case, when I did lock in a stable overclock, it did fail with the auto fan speeds of 50%. I had to raise them to 60% to get things stable. So if you do want to overclock, be prepared to manually set in some fan speeds to get a tangible benefit over that of the out of the box settings. But speaking of the performance numbers in Q mode, P mode, and the overclock mode, I'll pull up one graph for you guys and then we're gonna forget about quiet mode, where we can see it's falling just a slight bit behind the performance mode, but the noise differential isn't that big. So if you're going to get this card, I just recommend leaving it on the default mode out of the box and not really changing anything at all. If you're going to overclock it, definitely set the fan speeds to 60%. The Q mode itself, although it is there, I'd really only consider turning it on if you really are that sensitive to noise. But with that said, let's take this monstrous 1.275 kilogram card and compare it against the other cards in the fray and see how it stacks up. So with all the gaming benchmarks finished, it does paint a picture of a thousand words, but we will go over those thousand words for you guys, because it is important to note that this card does carry a premium over your standard RTX 2060 cards. And in the US, it's about 60 US dollars. In Australia, it's actually around 140 Aussie dollars. So if anything, you are getting a lot better value for money for the RTX 2060 Strix ROG in America, versus Australia. I'd say that 140 AUD premium is starting to push it a little bit. If anything, I'd like to see that come down in Australia. But with that aside, for 60 USD extra, it's actually pretty well justified considering the build quality of this card is phenomenal. The out of the box performance settings are really good too. Coming close to that of a manual overclock on the Galax RTX 2060 and coming quite close to an RTX 2070 though, keep in mind, I did not overclock the RTX 2070. That was out of the box settings, but it still was a little bit ahead. If anything, I'd like to think of this card as sort of performing like an RTX 2060 Ti, if that was the way to explain it. That seems to be where it's slotting in, somewhere in between a standard RTX 2060 and an RTX 2070. They're going through the numbers a little bit more in depth. We can see that in Apex Legends, this card is coming quite close to an RTX 2070. The Radeon 7's pulling well ahead. The 1660 Ti, although it's getting lower numbers, you will see a trend running through all these benchmarks. And that's that the 1% and 0.1% lows are the closest I've ever seen to the average FPS in any of the benchmarks I've done here on the channel. And this was a consistent trend that I noticed 
because I just did these fresh benchmarks yesterday. So I was able to analyze them and then stack things up and say, hey, 1660 Ti isn't doing too bad. But moving over now to Far Cry New Dawn, a new game in the stack here. We tested with minimum and also average FPS. And this title was doing very well for the ROG Strix card, coming ahead of that of the Galax by quite a bit, and also coming close to the RTX 2070. Radeon 7 again pulling out quite ahead. Moving over to Dirt Rally 2, this does look like it's an Nvidia favored title. So the RTX 2070 actually scored a victory over the Radeon 7 in this particular title, and still coming ahead of the RTX 2060. Though the 2060 ROG Strix still coming ahead of the Galax RTX 2060, and then the 1660 Ti, following that trend of having those very consistent 1% and 0.1% lows. And moving over to Crisis 3, you guys loved it when I tested this game recently. And honestly, I'm gonna keep testing this game. I think it's just a staple running over the years at how demanding it actually is. And look at the numbers, it's following that buck trend that we saw in the first two titles, Radeon 7 out in front, 2070, then 2060 ROG, then a standard 2060, then a 1660 Ti. And then the last game we had up here was Strange Brigade where this was looking like it was slightly favored towards AMD than the Nvidia cards. But on that note, the ROG Strix did perform very well, coming close to that when it was overclocked to an RTX 2070. Where the numbers were showing that this title is favored towards AMD graphics cards over Nvidia cards, but the ROG Strix is doing very well, slightly more towards the RTX 2070 than that of the 1660 compared to other titles. So great performance out of this card. So there you guys pretty much have it with the ROG Strix RTX 2060. Now, some other things that they do include on this card is another button besides your VBIOS switch, and this is to turn the LEDs on and off instantly. You can also use the software to change the RGBs to different color schemes. I personally like the music and temperature, which were special effects. Though I will critique one thing, and that is I would have liked to have seen more choices in terms of your RGB software, in that they only had six choices, two of those being the special effects that I mentioned before. Looking at the inputs and outputs at the rear, you get two HDMI and also two display port outs, totaling four display out options, which can power four monitors at the same time. The card also requires six plus eight pin PCIe connectors and comes in with dimensions of 300 millimeters long by 134 millimeters wide and has a depth of that of a two and a half slot cooler and features three 90 mil fans. So Zeus have used a custom PCB on this card and it is just like any other ROG Strix product. And that is build quality is good, overclocks are good, temperatures are good, noise is good, and it does have a premium over your standard MSRP entry level cards of that same caliber. And you do get the RGB lighting on the front and rear of the card where the logo on the back plate itself will light up. So basically in closing, my thoughts with the RTX 2060 Strix is if you are in the US, that $60 USD price tag isn't looking too bad considering how beast of a card this is. If you're in Australia, the 140 Aussie dollar price tag increase over your standard RTX 2060s is a little bit too much. I'd like to see a Zeus drop that if that's some feedback for them then I could definitely recommend it more so than those to the people in the US. So to sum things up for you guys, the ROG Strix card is an absolute beast. It does use slightly more power than its competing RTX 2060s that come in an MSRP, but that's because it is aggressively clocked out of the box. I feel like a card like this is definitely suited towards someone who doesn't really want to overclock, but wants great performance out of the box. And you just pretty much slot it in a build and you're gonna be getting a really good gaming experience. So they've done a phenomenal job, though keep in mind, it does use a little bit more power and does cost a bit more than your standard MSRP RTX 2060s. But on that note, they've done a good job. Hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button and hopefully I answered all those questions about this card right here. If I didn't, or you just want some tech yes loving, then be sure to drop a comment in the comment section below and I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.